Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting vlog. Today I want to discuss the last video that I did release on my main channel simply because it is such an important topic and one that I get asked about a lot and that is the limitations of Adobe After Effects. Now obviously the main motivation for me releasing that video is that I get asked a lot about creating tutorials for visual effects that people see in movies or TV shows and the art is not created in Adobe After Effects. After Effects is a video compositing program. So you take images, videos and you combine them together, you blend them, you cut bits and pieces out and you make it into one video clip. You composite a lot of layers into a single shot, which is why they're called composite shots. Now there are other tools that do the same thing, like um, Nuke is a really popular one, used in the visual effects industry quite a lot. Very expensive though, which is the main reason I'm not using it. It's node-based compositing, so it works a little different as well. But the purpose of these tools is just to take video material or layers or 3D imagery that has been created for you and combining and compositing them. And that's technically it. That means that the moment you think about creating a certain visual effect like a wall collapsing or a building falling down, well, you can't create that footage inside of Adobe After Effects because that's not what After Effects was made for. You will have to use a separate tool like a 3D package, a physics simulation tool or something else to generate that footage, export it from that tool and then bring it into After Effects for the final composite. There are a ton of tools out in the market that are used in the film industry and there are probably too many to cover. Obviously 3D Studio Max is a staple, Maya, Houdini is very popular these days, real flow for water simulations. Um, then obviously a lot of camera tracking tools like Buju, um, Mocha, Synthize is very popular as well. I'm trying to get into that at the moment. So there's a huge range of tools that gets used by people in the film industry or for visual effects to do all of the tracking, generating the 3D physics, making simulations for water, destructions, fire, smoke. All of that then gets rendered out and composited. Usually in Nuke, I would say. Nuke seems to be more popular in the actual industry, but could also go into After Effects because After Effects is actually a pretty nifty and powerful program. I think one thing that causes a lot of confusion is that Adobe has started to add a lot of visual effects capabilities into After Effects. Like you can create simple 2D effects like lightning, distortions, um, smoke and fire with particles, some 3D camera tracking, face tracking is now available as well, 2D animations. So you can create a lot of stuff in After Effects and it gives people this impression that After Effects is a visual effects creation tool. but it's not really meant for that. It's meant as a video compositing tool that just happens to have some visual effects on top of it. And then there are companies like Video Copilot or Red Giant, um, Imagineer that create plugins for Adobe After Effects that then add things like 3D capabilities, light flares, all sorts of other cool visual effects. So you can start creating some really cool things for your film projects directly in After Effects. However, After Effects at its core is still a video compositing tool. So a lot of things that you see in movies and TV shows just aren't possible using After Effects. Following on from the realization that you can't create a lot of cool visual effects in Adobe After Effects, of course, is will I be creating tutorials for all of these other programs out there? The answer is I do intend to, but there's a bit of a caveat and that is that a, there are a lot of tools out there and I can't teach them all. Um, I do have a full-time job that is not YouTube, so I have limited time to create these videos and I spend a lot of time on every single tutorial, which is why I'm so slow bringing out new ones. So I do need to find the ones that I actually like, the ones that I think are not too difficult to get into, but you can use to create some really cool visual effects. Um, I'm still kind of looking around, trying to learn them myself. I, I don't know how to use a lot of these tools. I've used a little bit 3D Studio Max, You've used a little bit Mocha, a little bit Synthize. That's about it. Cinema 4D um, I've used as well, but I don't know very much about them and you can spend months and years practicing and learning how to use them. So until I feel I'm really comfortable using them, I don't feel I'm ready to make tutorials for them. At least not yet. Then the other challenge is that a lot of people want me to create tutorials for visual effects that they see in movies and TV shows. However, not only do they use a whole range of different tools that you need to know, but they're also done by teams of professionals. It's not just one guy doing it on the side in the afternoon or something or in the evening after work. It's 
teams of professionals that spend weeks and months and years building these complex setups in 3D studio, um, physics simulations in Houdini or some water from RealFlow, merging it all together and turning it into something that looks really, really impressive. Now, if it takes people month and week to create, imagine how long it would take to explain that process in detail that someone could follow it and make a tutorial out of it. So. The problem is I can't easily fit movie style visual effects into a 40 minute tutorial. It's just not possible. Um, I've done some tutorial series as well on my channel and obviously I am considering doing that for some of the other tools and other things that I want to do. But generally they're not being as well received. A lot of people scream about they want more advanced visual effects but the moment I make tutorials for them or for the more advanced visual effects not many people watch them, not many people like them, and they all say, oh, can you make more basic ones again? So I'm kind of, you know, trying to gauge the water temperature a little bit and figure out what tutorials are best to make and that I feel my audience is getting the best value out of. There still is a ton more to show for Adobe After Effects, for Premiere and Audition and some of the other things that I want to make tutorials for. So I'm not straight away going to jump into all the really hardcore advanced tools just because they're going to be really difficult to get into A for me to learn and then B for all of you to actually follow along with some tutorials that I make. So there's still going to be a lot of After Effects tutorials. I do want to make some more general ones for filmmaking in general because I find that people focus so much on the visual effects, they're so hard on, oh, I need to have that muzzle flash that, well, great, you got a cool looking muzzle flash in your movie, but the movie sucks. So there are so many things to know about filmmaking. I'm still learning. Um, I'm not a professional, I do this as a hobby, so I'm still learning, but there are so many cool things that I think are really, really valuable to create better film projects, um, create better edits, make your sound better. And I definitely want to explain some more of those before I kind of keep going with all of the After Effects, visual effects tutorials. So yeah, there's a lot to do, a lot of stuff to make tutorials for. There will be more tutorials coming. And I'm thinking of using this visual effects vlog to actually talk about the videos that I did release on my main channel, kind of as a follow up. Just for people who want a bit more information from my main channel, they can kind of come over here onto my second one and just check out some of the behind the scenes and after party, it's not really a party, the aftermath of my main channel videos maybe. Just because the videos on my main channel take me so long to create, it's nice to kind of talk a little bit about the thought process that went into them, some of the efforts, some of the difficulties. Yeah, and I do hope that you enjoy, you know, getting a little bit of a behind the scenes look. Not really, but I am kind of behind the scenes here because you're not actually seeing my screen. Yeah, and I really hope you enjoyed these vlogs. Do let me know if you have any comments, questions or suggestions. And as always, just leave them down in the section below. Don't forget to check out my main channel if you are interested in some cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials. Thank you very much for following along with this vlog. And until next time, I will see you later.